Well, Coach, you know, 15-1, to 1, uh, I know there can't be too much that you're upset with after that game. It seemed like everything was working for you. That way uh, was really good as well. The offense really came to life. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we built off last night. Last night was a big win. Uh, haven't been playing very well, clearly. Uh, we lost five out of six on the road at Washington and, and Arizona, and we needed to, you know, bounce back. We won the Tuesday second game, and uh, I really thought – uh, our bats have been better. Uh, you know, our middle lineup is is swinging it pretty good, and our, our top and our bottom have, have added to it. So, uh, Mercer's a really good pitcher. Uh, clearly, he's up up to 96 with a good change and a good breaking ball, and so he's not easy to hit at all. I mean, he's one of the tougher guys out there to hit in our league. And uh, you know, Jeremy comes up with a leadoff home run, and then. Then he dominates us for about seven, eight hitters, and and then uh, we get two guys on in the fourth, and then Jeremy hits that home run to right. So, uh, a lot of good at bats, and uh, you know we're, we're we're playing better defense and we're pitching a little better. So, it seems it seems like we're back on track a little bit. Was it just a case of getting home, or you know? Well, it's a good question. I mean, you know, we 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 pride ourselves playing on the road, um, and you know we didn't play Arizona handled us and. Uh, Washington uh, pretty much uh, handled us, so um, you know it was discouraging for sure. Uh, just we weren't ourselves. We weren't we weren't pitching. We weren't playing defense. We weren't really stringing any bats together. And it happens. You go through. You know it's a long season, and we still you know relatively young. And uh, we showed our, our uh, you know I don't know uh, immaturity, I guess you would say, or. Uh, but we, we, we found it now, and, and uh, you know, in this league, you can, get, you can get beat in this league a week in and week out, uh, regardless of who you play. It doesn't matter who you play. Um, and, uh, you know, we've responded pretty well since, you know, from the last two weekends. How important is it for you tomorrow to kind of finish off this series going towards a huge weekend on the road again at Corvallis and trying to, you know, as you're trying to lock up a, a spot in the NCAA tournament? Well, you know, it's, it's all about – it's not, you know, about playing well, you know. I mean, if we play well, you know, we feel we can play with anybody. I mean, uh, you know, even with our, you know, injuries on the mound, I mean, it's, you know, with John and Kyle and, and, and Hoop and, you know, it's been it's been difficult. But the guys have done a really good job. I mean, Bird has stepped up, Petway has stepped up. and But tomorrow's, you know, whenever you win the first two games, tomorrow's, you know, it's always a big game. And then, and then you're facing, you know, Best teams in the in the conference, uh, you know, Oregon State, if not the best team. So, uh, you know, we still got a lot of work to do, and there's still a lot of baseball left. So, uh, you know, we just go game to game, and then and then we'll prepare for uh, Oregon State next week. What did you kind of expect out of Petway coming into this season? I mean, before you lose Hooper and yeah. you know, Molnar and Olson, I mean, was he even expected to compete for that rotation spot? He thought he was going to be our Tuesday guy. Okay. You know, it really was lined up to go. You know, I mean. You know, Olson and Molnar and Hooper and, and Bird and, you know, and then possibly, you know, one of those guys on Tuesday or one of those guys in the bullpen and try to start a freshman on Tuesday. And then that thing blew up, you know. Uh, so Petway was forced into our Sunday guy early on, and then he, then he had to get run up to the Saturday, you know, job. And he's just responded, man. I mean, the guy is just, you know, he's got presence and he's got – uh, demeanor and, he, and he's got confidence and you know his stuff is ordinary uh, I don't think anybody you know says hey this guy wow this stuff is unbelievable but you know you got to learn to pitch with what you have and and that's what he does he does a really good job of knowing himself and, and competing and there's times where it, it looks a little rough you know as a freshman you would expect I mean look at some of the best pitchers in the in this conference it's tough to, to pitch well as a freshman and Overall, you know, he's, he's, he's been a savior. I mean, he stepped up in a big, big way. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we just got to keep on riding him on Saturdays. And then lastly, Jeremy Iden's at the top of the lineup. Seems like he's gotten really hot. But also just, you know, what's been maybe the progression of him to be able to go the opposite way with a home run besides, you know, the first yeah. one going 4 and 14 feet. But then yeah. I think more impressive going the other way. Well, he's a good athlete. You know, I mean, he's he's – you know he can run and, and he can go and he can go get the ball in the outfield and, and, and his he's had a really good year offensively. I mean, 
we moved to the top of the lineup and moved Amaral back to where, you know, and it's really worked. I mean, uh, Idens has done a great job in the leadoff spot, and, and Amaral has driven in runs in the, in the in the sixth spot. So, in the five in the sixth spot. So, it's you know, it, it's just played itself out, and he's just uh, he went to Northwoods League last last summer, and he's just more mature, he's stronger, and it took him a year to get a, you know his feet on the ground. Northern California kid that played at St. Francis, and and uh, we knew he was going to be good, but uh, he's really you know. Turn himself into a dynamic, you know, outfielder and, and a really good leadoff guy.